thank you thank you for being with us today can you hear me okay yeah we I can yeah. hear you now. Sorry, I was having uh, had to turn my microphone on. Fantastic. Thank you so much for making it on a Sunday, uh, on, a, on a long weekend holiday. So we really appreciate your presence here. And thanks for all the uh, participants for joining in on a Sunday, whether it's in the evening, early morning, or midday. So uh, it gives me a great pleasure to, uh, to introduce Dr. David Wojciechowski, uh, who's the uh, Medical Director of Kidney Transplantation uh, at uh, University of Texas uh, Southwestern uh, Medical Center, uh, where he is an associate professor in the Department of Internal Medicine. Thank you, Dr. Safa, for that nice introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Um, make sure we're sharing the right one here. Yes, we can see this screen. Just have to maximize it. Perfect. Let me uh, swap yeah. it around. Yes. Uh, all right, so now you can see my main slide. Perfect. Thank you. All right, you. perfect. Sorry about the technical glitches, guys. I uh, was telling uh, Dr. Safa, my institution uses Teams, and I didn't realize I didn't even have Zoom on my computer. <laughs> so I had to download Zoom and, and do the whole thing. So I apologize. I should have thought that ahead. Um, there's so many uh, uh, apps now to do these meetings that uh, if you don't have them loaded, it obviously creates glitches. Um, well, I was asked to give a little bit of an update on BK. and. Um, uh, I'm going to show some slides actually from a, a TTS consensus conference that we had about a little over a year ago now where we were met to update the guidelines. And I'll, so some of my slides will actually be from that. And um, I can't say that I'm showing anything new because Dr. Hans Herr showed those at the TTS meeting a few months ago. And then I used uh, similar slides um, at ATC um, earlier this, well, actually, I guess we're in July now, earlier in June when the ATC meeting occurred. So I'm not going to show all those slides, but just a couple as, as it relates to screening and some treatment recommendations um, in terms of what I'll use to um, uh, give my talk and, and, and talk about those particular aspects. But then I'm gonna spend a lot of slides on some of the literature that's been out there on additional therapies for BK. Um, and it's really kind of littered with um, failed clinical trials. Uh, Dr. Safa mentioned that I've done a lot of clinical trials, which is true. And none have been as unsuccessful as have the BK ones, but I'll go through those just so we can sort of see the, the data and um, kind of understand why we're sort of just left with immunosuppression reduction as our main treatment. So as many of you probably know, um, this virus has been known since 1971. This was the original paper that came out in The Lancet um, in June of that year, um, where um, um, this new, quote, pop, uh, papovirus uh, was isolated from urine after renal transplant. Um, and it was named after the initials, actually, of the patient um, who had the diagnosis. And the patient developed a ureteral stricture, um, which we now know is one of the associated complications of this virus after kidney transplantation. It's actually not a particularly uh, complicated virus in many ways. It uh, has three coding regions. It's a circular DNA virus, um, has early genes, late genes, and then a non-coding regulatory region. The early genes, um, which are, as I mentioned, regulatory, have the large T antigen and the small T antigen, um, and they help um, um, in terms of um, cell cycle proliferation and replication. And then you have the structural genes, VP1, 2, and 3, um, which are typically the target of... Um, some of the uh, newer drugs that are being developed right now, particularly the antibodies uh, against BK. And then you have this non-coding regulatory region that contains the origin of transcription and the factor um, binding sites. Um, so it's not a particularly complicated virus, a little over 5,100 base pairs. The pathogenesis, as we know, um, is such that most of us probably have had a primary infection with this when we were younger. Um, you have hematogenous dissemination of the virus um, and then it undergoes a latency phase, um, similar to like a, what a herpes virus might do. Um, and then it sort of sits there, sits in the GU track. Um, and then with transplantation, particularly with kidney transplantation, you undergo immunosuppression. Um, there's some local factors probably associated with the viral reactivation, including an infl inflammation around the ureter. Um, um, T cell impairment from uh, lymphocyte depletion and other drugs. And then what can happen is the virus will reactivate 